ونسلم ونسلم على رسول الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقولوا لما يقتل في سبيل الله اموات بل احياء ولكن لا تشعرون صدق الله ولا نظيم ولا على رسوله النبي الامين المكين الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكين والحمد لله رب العالمين او يا اعظم من يبسر سما مدد قبلا دي مدد كعبه امام مدد قادريم نارائے اغوت یا آدمی زنم دمز شیخ ادرزا خان قطب عالم نی زنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد مسلک سرکار یا آڈا حالہ حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ ناموں سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نبی رومی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاة و سلام علیہ یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیب یا طبیب یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ وسلم و صحابہ و رحمت علیہ وسلم All praise is due to Almighty Allah the Lord and Salaam is upon the most perfect exalted and glorified of Allah's creation Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Peace, blessings and salutations upon the Anbiya Ikram Ahli Bayt Adhar, Sahaba Ikram Khalifa Rashidin, Tabayin, Tabayin, Tabayin Aima Mishtahideen, Awliya Kamilin and all those who follow the path until the last day we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his infinite mercy and to the wasilah of Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for blessing us with the opportunity to congregate for Salat al-Jumma and to prostrate these most exalted khun. Before continuing, let us all send the room in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Muhammadin tabi kulu wa dawaiha wa afshan al-dhani wa shifaiha wa nuri al-shwari wa diyaiha wa alihi wa sallamu wa alayhi wa sallam daiman abadan sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created insan and made him the best in the creation. And that is why Allah says in the Holy Quran, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِمِ Allah is saying that we have created man in the best form, in the best of modes. But as I said in the past that amongst men Allah has given different levels. But these levels are not based on wealth or poverty. It is not based on strength or weakness. It is not based on the color of your skin. It is based on piety. It is based on taqwa. And what is piety? What is taqwa? When we say this person has taqwa in the true sense, what does it mean? It means that they are Allah fearing. Taqwa in a muttaqi is one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why you will find those who fear Allah fear nothing. That is why, look at the awliya. Look at the sahaba ikram, Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu. How many bodyguards they walked with? How many bodyguards did Hazrat Umar Farooq walk with when he was the Khalifa al Muslim? How many bodyguards did Hazrat Sayyid Abu Bakr Siddiq walk with when he was the, he was the Khalifa al Muslim? He went alone. Why? They had true khawf e khuda. They fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they knew that yes, take whatever precautions they are for your self-protection. But always remember that Allah is your protector. So in humans, there are different grades. There are different levels. They are the ordinary people like you and I. Then there are those whom Allah has blessed with the understanding of his deen. They are those whom Allah has blessed with being amongst His awliya, amongst His beloved and close servants. They are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with being the guides of those awliya. And they are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with being the companions of the greatest of His creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are the sahaba ikram. And they are those who are the anbiya, and then there is him who is Imam al-Ambiya. 
the leader of all the prophets, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So Allah has given different grades to humans. And as I said, it is not based on your color of your skin, it is not based on your bank balance, it is not based on all of these materialistic things. It is based on the condition of your heart, of your piety that is in your heart. Okay? So amongst these pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the shuhada kiram those who sacrifice their lives truly for the sake of Allah. Not so that somebody can call them a shaheed. Not that so, that so that somebody can... Today, look, most of the things that people do, mostly, when people do any amal, they do it because somebody can say, oh, he's a very great namazi. Look at him when he stands up. He, he doesn't stop. Everybody left the masjid. He's still reading. Different case for those that are really doing it out of piety. But for those who are doing it out of riyakari, you know how you recognize it? How do you recognize it, whether it is for real or whether it is riyakari? See whether you do the same when you are on, alone. See whether you read with so much of sincerity and so much and devotion and so many rakat when you are alone. Or you do the quick one where you are like pecking on the ground and finishing your sajda. And when you are in front of the people, then you read as if you are reading very long. So the person will be able to recognize on his own. So people may today do the amal because they want to be called big namazi. Because he wants to be called a very charitable person, give so much of money. You want to see that the amount of charity you give openly, how much you give hiding. Where the left does not know what the right did. So the true servants of Allah, the shuhada, those are the real shuhada who gave their lives for the sake of Allah's deen, for the pleasure of Allah. Not for riyah. Not so that they can, can be called shuhada. So that they can be given this title. And these shuhada ikram are such blessed personalities. That Allah is saying in the Quran about them. And do not say those who have been martyred, who have been slain in the way of Allah to be dead. Do not say that they are dead, but they are alive. Zinda hai, unhe murda mat kaho. Don't say that they are dead. And one, in one verse of the Holy Quran, Allah says, Do not even think that they are dead. Do not even think they are dead. Now think about those shahada, all the shahada of Islam. And think about that shaheed who was nurtured in the Kadmanas of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Think about that martyr who was nurtured in the lap of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa As I said that when he would raise his head, everybody raises his head to look at something bright. What bright do you look at when you raise your head? To look at the sun, to look at the moon. But when Hussein raised his head, he looked at the sun of the sun. He looked at the brightest sun. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Everything about him was beautiful. Today people want to say, today both myself want to compare with Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa Want to compare with the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa People ask, how do you, what is the comparison? I said, there is no comparison. Not what is the comparison. There is no comparison. You cannot compare to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa in any way. It's very clear. He is the Nabi. We are the Ummati. There is no comparison. You cannot compare. We are on the lowest level and he is beyond the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eh? He is Qadmanaz. He is that Mubarak personality that the arsh was waiting to kiss his Mubarak feet. Eh? This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You can't compare. Imam Hussein, you can't reach the level of Imam Hussein. Leave Imam Hussein. You can't reach the level of the dust under the ground of Imam Hussein. And you want to become Imam? You want to compare yourself to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Let me tell you something first. Very quickly. Two minutes. Two, three minutes and I'm going to end. Very fast I'm going to do this. I've said this before, I'm repeating. The, um, the, 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 those who want to compare to the Ambiya Ikram Alim Salatu Wasallam, you can't compare to the grandson. You can't compare. Leave the grandson. You can't compare to those who humble themselves who, in front of those who humble themselves in front of those who humble themselves in front of those who humble themselves in front of those who honor the grandson of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can't even compare to them. Eh? When Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mubarak was asked, who is greater? Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz, the first Khalifa of Islam, or Hazrat Amir Mahaviya radiallahu anh. What did he say? وَبَارٌ دَخَلَ فِي فَرْسِ أَنْسَ أَنْ فِي فَرْسِ مُعَاوِيَةِ He said that dust that went in the nostrils of the horse of Amir Muawiyah while he rode beside Rasulullah is greater than Umar bin Abdul Aziz. 
Why? Because he was a sahabi that rode beside Rasulullah. Allah, Allah. And here we want to compare to the beloved Rasulullah. Some people want to compare. You want to compare to the Halibayt of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Let me tell you one thing only about our Nabi. One thing, leave everything else. All the other discussions. We've spoken about this before. We know that once the sahabi of the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wanted to send off his daughter in marriage. He, wanted to get his, he was getting his daughter married. Isn't it? He was sending off his daughter. Everybody when they send off their daughter, don't you want to give them the best gift within your capacity? When I'm saying best gift, quickly I'm telling you. I want to get my daughter married, I want to get my son married. Doesn't go meet, make 100,000 in an account. Doesn't mean go and make 100,000 debt to show the community that I can do a big wedding. Where's all the big weddings now in COVID? It's not for show. Do what is within your means. Do what is within your means. If you got extra, then rather give it to them, let them live their life with it. Do it within your means. Samajre. Just food for thought. So this Sahabi was sending up his daughter. So everybody wants to send up the daughter the best. What he wanted to give her a beautiful khushbu. Nice, some beautiful perfume when she's going. But the Sahabi could not find any ether in his house. Look at what life they lived. House humble. Look at their condition. The companions of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't have perfume in the house. Huh? This was their, 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 their humility. They, they lived in a simple life. They were not so financially stable, all of them. But they were the wealthiest and they are the wealthiest. Because they got the greatest treasure. They got the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They got the didar of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was sending his daughter off. Could not find any perfume. When you can't find any perfume, he couldn't find the perfume for giving his daughter some ithar on the day of her wedding, on when, the day when she was leaving the home. What did he need to do? If he couldn't find perfume, where should he have gone? To the perfume. He should have gone to the shop of the perfume. Okay? Where they get perfumes. To the attar, to the ithar farosh, he should have gone. Okay? The one who sells real perfume. He should have gone there. That's where he should have gone. Oh, if he didn't have the money to do it, he should have gone to one of his neighbors and said, can you just lend me a little bit of perfume? My daughter is getting married. But he didn't go to the shop. He didn't go to the neighbor. You know where he went? He went to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Where did he go to? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he got into the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Why didn't he go anywhere else? Why he went to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa it shows the Akida of the Sahaba. It shows the Akida of the Sahaba. That he's showing you that when I need something like Itar, when I need something like perfume, I go to the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu When you need anything like Jannat, also go to the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Your Nabi is your wasila for the khushbu of the dunya. And he is your Nabi, he is your wasila for the khushbu of the akhirah. He is the, 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 the means of your fragrance of the dunya. He is the means of the fragrance of your grave and of Jannat also. Because even Jannat has borrowed its fragrance from the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Understand this here. So he went there and he said to the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I need to get my daughter married. I'm sending her off. I don't have perfume. What Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? He said, bring a little bottle. Give me one bottle. Huzur Sallallahu also didn't say, go to the shop. Go and ask the neighbor. At that time, apparently, there was no ithar in the presence in the home of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ithar as in real, in the, in, not real, but the materialistic perfume. There was not. So, but Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi still said, give a bottle. You know why? This is that darbar. This is that court that the word no, the one asks, never hears no. The word no is not in the dictionary of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his ummah. So he didn't, he, 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 there was nothing apparently present. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give me a bottle. He gave a bottle to the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took it and he put his blessed perspiration. What he put? Pasina Mubarak. And he took the Pasina Mubarak. And the beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took the Pasina Mubarak. And he gave it to the Sahabi. And he said, go and tell your daughter to apply this. Anybody who wants to compare to the Nabi? Give your perspiration to your daughter, your own perspiration. Not your murshids, I'm saying. I'm saying yours. Take your own perspiration and give your daughter, say, Betty, put this when you're going on the wedding day. Say, Pagal ho gay. Mujha khushbu ki zurur tha badbu nahi. Are you gone mad? I want a fragrance, not a stench. 
not an order. Here Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving his perspiration Mubarak. The Sahabi is not saying, I asked waiter, you're giving me perspiration. Sahabi to Jum gay. Jum gay. He took that blessed perspiration and goes to his daughter and gives her. This is from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that pitta itar. That woman, she applies it. What she does? She applies it. She applies it and she goes and gets married. And do you know what happens? Narrations have said that the house continued to be fragrant for the rest of the zamana. Whoever passed the house said that this year is the Baytul Muttimeen. This is the house of the fragrance one. This is the house of the fragrant ones. And some narrations say that when her children were born and her children's children were born, they were born with their kushbo of Rasulullah. I want to ask you a question. One more narrative. Today I'm going to take two minutes extra of your time. One more divide. Sahabi Rasul, Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu says, I smelt all the perfumes in this dunya. I smelt musk, I smelt amber, but I have not smelt anything like the khushbu of Rasul Ipaq. <laughs> Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The wife of Hazrat Sayyidina, Utba ibn Farqad Salmi radiallahu anhu. Her name was Umm Asim. Her name was Umm Asim. She says that Hazrat Utba radiallahu anhu, he loved perfume. What he did? He loved perfume. And she said that we were four women in his nikah. How many wives? Four women. And she said, each of us competed. We want to be the best for him. We had four, we had four wives. He had four wives. We had four women in his nikah. And whenever we went to him, we would put the best perfume. We would, we would Im- kind of immerse ourselves in perfume because we knew that Udba liked khushbu. He really liked perfume. And she said, not alone, leave us. He used to also use itar, but he had a habit, he would pour the itar into his palms of his hands, and he would rub it and apply it in himself. Because of the sunnah to use itar, he used itar. But they are saying, his wife says, Umm Asim says, that she says that when we used to go to Udba, each of us, we used to use the best perfume, we used to go to him, but we would find that his perfume overwhelmed all of us. He used the same perfume which was in the house, but his perfume was better than everybody else. She said, we, every time one, one went, would go spend time with him and come back, she would tell the other one, mm, still Udba's perfume. So the other one would now use a better itar. And she went, the third one went to visit him, same thing. Fourth one went, same thing. Time and over they went. One day they said, no, now we have to ask. They say, now we have to ask. Udba, tell us. Oh, tell us. What is this? We sometimes feel like we're immersing ourselves in perfume. And we come to you. But your fragrance overwhelms all four of our fragrances. It overwhelms all our fragrances. What is this? He says, let me tell you. Let me tell you. One day, I had a heat rash on my body. I had a heat rash on my body. And when I had this heat rash, it was giving me taklif and it was burning. And it was itching. I did not know what to do. So I went to Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look, they wanted itar, they went to Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They wanted shifa, they went to Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything they wanted, they went to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he goes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I went to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu I'm having this rash. And my, 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 my body is burning and a tak- lot of taklif. He said, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, take off your, your kurta. Take off your upper garment. He said, I removed my upper garment. He said, and when I removed my upper garment, Nabi Akram Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, what he did, he said, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam took his Mubarak hand. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi took his Mubarak hands and he started to rub my, my chest. He started to rub my back. He started to rub my stomach. And he said, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing this, I started to feel the taklif fading away immediately. I started to feel the taklif fading away immediately. And Hadrat, what does he say? He says, Hadrat Udbar, what does he say? He said, that feeling of that burning and that itching was gone by the time Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was rubbing his Mubarak hands. And he said to his wives, now let me tell you what is that khushbu. Ever since that day that Nabi rubbed my body, from that day, Till today, that khushbu is put, is a put Rahman, it's just said. It's emanating from my body. That fragrance is emanating from my body. I want to ask a question for those who want to compare. Bring that khushbu. You'll never be able to bring it. And if that is the khushbu from the sahabi whose stomach was touched by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that sahabi whose back was touched by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if this is his fragrance, then what is the fragrance of Hussein who was born from Fatima to Sahara? What is the fragrance of Hussein who was born from Fatima to Sahara? And you want to still compare. 
Allah keep us and give us understanding of deen. Allah give us the love of the Halibayt and the love of the Sahaba of Rasulullah Pak Islam and all those who love them. Wa ma'alim al Salaam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dua for all those who are ill in our community, those that have passed away in Ahl Sunnah. Young brother also passed away this week, brother Muhammad Tahir. Chisti Sabri, Muhammad Tahir Khan Chisti Sabri. Huh? Ah, Hussain's corner. Allah Ta'ala make his maqfirat also. All the other instead of passing in Ahl Sunnah, those we know, those we don't know. Allah exalt them. Yafir Shah. Yafir Shah. Sayyid Yaqub Shah, Sayyid Nasir's brother, Abhi Sharif's cousin also passed away. Allah make his maqfirat. All those, I, there's so many people, I can't remember all the names right now. Allah give, make all the maqfirat, those that are passed away in Allah Sunnah, Allah exalt them. Those that are illa Allah grant me shiva, tamil, shiva, Allah ajil. Those that are going to end taqif, Allah remove the taqif. I apologize, I've taken five minutes more of your time today. Allah give us barakat in our time. Allah protect us from this COVID. And Allah ta'ala keep everybody safe. Take the necessary precautions, as I've been saying. Uh, whatever you need to take and then the rest leave in the court of Allah Allah is our protector. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.